as we look at the Advent season, we think about what each day entails that we know that we have hope and we have peace and we have joy. And for us today, I want us to think about the word love. See, Jesus, he brought hope. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. There is no joy in this life that is lasting apart from God. And when we look at love, there is no love without him. For the Bible tells us in 1 John that God is love. That in this and how we live out our everyday life, he is love. What is love? What does that look like? Uh, as we go throughout the ending part where we get to celebrate Christmas and we get to see joy on children's faces when they wake up in the morning. When we get to see the, the faces of our loved ones open up that, that gift, that perfect thing that we had look into the new year. And as we approach the new year, I want you to know that in 2019, God doesn't exist uh, 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 stop existing he continues to live through that as we look at this time of year coming up this idea of stand are you not hearing me how about I turn the mic on guys <laughs> it's amazing this time of year <laughs> and if you think I got my sermon memorized I don't <laughs> so I don't know what I said before but if it was good it probably was and you just didn't hear it uh, it goes downhill from here can you hear me now Morris yes, sir. yeah what I said a while ago was the best thing I've ever said Morris and you missed it yeah, I, I can never repeat it again, but it's okay. But, but the ideal in the Bible, I want you to know something as we look to the next year. The Bible consistently, when you look at the armor of God, when you look at the mantle of who we are to be, we are to be people who stand. That when he puts on the armor of God, there's nothing on our back. It's all in the front. He only tells us to run from one thing and run from one thing only. We are to flee that thing, but everything else he tells us to stand. And in the world we live in, we need a church who stands for what is gospel truth. And that's what we're going to do next year. So in this moment, as we look to the, to the Advent season and we see what God's love is all about, we see the hope that we find in Jesus. We find the peace and the joy that only comes from God. This month, we've been talking about being driven by the real life. That the commercials that you see that tell you what's good and, and great and you have to have this and that and another is just advertising. It will always fail you. It will run out. The, the batteries will go dead. The, the, the thing will rust out. It will finally, sooner or later, leave you. That every gift that we get, the things that we have, they're, they're fleeting moments. That for us, as we think about that real life and being driven by hope and peace and joy, I ask the same question I asked at the beginning of the month. What or who is the object of my hope? Whatever the object of your hope is, is who you will inevitably worship and who you worship becomes your God. Is that God that you are worshiping, that you are creating this object of hope in? Is he worth it? Is he, is he worthy? See, everything that we try to put our hope in, that we, that we live out our life for, if it's not through Jesus Christ, it will eventually let you down. See, we put expectations upon people to fulfill our hopes, our dreams. People don't have that ability to fulfill all of our heart's desires. I mean, you think about it when when you think about marriage and I think about marriage, I, I see the hope that we place in marriage. 
But the Bible tells us about hope. He says he takes no pleasure in the strength of a horse or in human might. No, the Lord's delight is in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. See, when we think about love and his unfailing love, that's where we are to put our hope. See, our lives should be driven by real love. And in our world today, I mentioned marriage, that we look for marriage to, to be our peace, our solace, our moment where we can just be in the moment. And oftentimes, we, we don't really see real love, even in marriages these days. We don't find the tranquil part of our life where we see a sunrise or a sunset. It's, it's constant. It's constant hustle and bustle. It's constant strife and struggle when we look at marriages and we and we see this and you say why are you talking about marriage when we're talking about unfailing love because see ultimately my hope is not in what this world can give me my hope is in his unfailing love and what is that what does that really look like see the bible tells us this and let the peace that comes from christ rule in your hearts See, we talked about this two weeks ago where we, where we have this mentality of my hope is in God. My hope is in him. Now I look and say my peace, it must rule in my heart. It's, it's what I live and I base it upon, him. The Bible goes on and says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Well, for me today, I want us to focus on the love of who Jesus Christ is. What does that look like in our life today? We go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, where it reads, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels. Imagine that. I mean, I remember Heather and I some ooh, 22 years ago, I guess, we went on a mission trip to, to Russia and we got to go into the schools and, and the first school we got to go in, we brought an interpreter with us and, and, the, and the teacher grabbed a hold of me and says, you come with me. And I'm like, I'm going with him into to a classroom with, with Russian kids and, and these kids, we get in there and, and he says, I'll interpret if we need to. So I start speaking and these Russian kids are understanding everything I'm saying. And finally one of them raises their hand and saying, well, we know Russian and we know English and we're required, every one of us are required to take a third language so I also know Japanese. And I'm just wondering how many languages do you know? I said, I know two, English and Kentucky. And they didn't laugh because they didn't know Kentuckian. Imagine the ability to speak every language and to be able to talk to every single person in their language, to be able to speak as angels speak, to have that ability. The Bible then says, but didn't love others. I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Imagine every single time you get around someone, all they do is clang, clang. Anybody ever give your kids a drum set for Christmas? Yeah, that's what grandparents do. Give their grandkids drum sets for Christmas and say, they're going home with you. And then all you hear is, king, king, king. Who wants to hear that? And yet some people don't understand the love of God. They think because they've read the Bible or they heard a sermon or they do something, yet every time they have a conversation with you, every time you get around them, all they are is king, 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 because they say you don't love them. See, we don't really understand what love is. Our hope is to be in the unfailing love of God. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2 goes on and says, If I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed 
all knowledge. And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, man, imagine you know everything. You can speak to everyone. You can go mountain move and the whole Rocky Mountains just move out of the way. Imagine having that kind of power. The Bible says, but didn't love others? I would be nothing. See, we are nothing without love. And the love that I'm speaking about is a love that comes only from God. This love that we speak of and talk about, we can become a sounding gong and a clashing cymbal all the time. Have you ever been around somebody that they're just basically rude? If you say no to that, it's probably you. <laughs> you either are the person or you know someone. Then no matter what, it's negative, negative, negative. Everything's bad. Everything's this. Everything's that. And you're the only one. I'm the only one that knows how to do this right. I see fingers pointing. Well, they'll be counseling for all married couples later on. The Bible goes on and says, if I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. I mean, imagine, imagine if you ever run into somebody that every time you you know that they're doing something and they're negative, 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 always mean, always mean, always mean. But then you come back with yeah, but they give to charity. They give to the, they give a lot to this. The Bible says you can do all of that. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. See, I want us to think about this moment, love. And I want you to think about the ideal of direction of will Versus feelings. Nothing more than feelings. That's as close to singing as you're ever going to hear me come. Unless I'm in a place sounding like a country boy, right? Now I want you to imagine when you first find that boyfriend or girlfriend. You just think about them all the time. And you just can't stop thinking about them. And every time you're separated from them, you feel this angst inside your heart. And it hurts so bad. And you just wonder, what are they doing? Because you just love them so much. Until they say something mean to you. And then you don't know if you love them anymore, right? And now we got this, I'm breaking up, I'm not breaking up, we broke up, we're not broke up, and we have all this love. Do you know how many marriages are only together as long as the person makes me feel good? See, the love is not based on what God's love is based upon. It's based upon a feeling. As long as you make me feel good for the moment, then we're good. So when we get up and we see a couple getting married, a lot of them that end up in divorce, before they started in the marriage process, what they should have said was, you make me feel good for the moment, and as long as you make me feel good for the moment, I'm going to stay married to you. But when you do something I don't like, therefore now I'm not going to love you anymore. See, the Bible tells us about God's unfailing love. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what we see is this word love is agape. It's a direction of will. See, God loves you even when you say, I don't believe in him. God loves you even when you say, I'm going to commit this sin. God loves you even when you act like a fool. When you are rude, God loves you. When you are impatient, God loves you. 
When you say things to other people that are called mean and stuff, he still loves you. It never changes. You cannot do anything to make God stop loving you. Nothing. God will never stop loving you. That's his unfailing love. God is so patient and God is so kind. God is so everything that love is that he will never fail you. Ever. So in this, as we look and we see the approaching day of Christmas, is the love you have for one another, is it a feeling or is it a direction of will? See, if you look at other people and are constantly agitated, constantly negative towards them, constantly berating them, constantly saying things, then it's about your feelings. It's not about God. In this very moment, when we look and we see that Jesus Christ came, and in Matthew, he talks about that the Emmanuel God is now with us. God is with us through Jesus Christ. That we have this understanding of what love is. See, the Bible tells us that three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. Agape. And the greatest of these is love. In this very moment, until we experience the love of God in my life, I can never give it to someone else. I can try, I can try, and I can try, but I will inevitably fail every time. If every time someone comes around you, you are negative towards them because they're not making you feel love. Therefore, I'm not going to give them love back. I mean, imagine just in the correlation of marriage. When you give those vows, you say, for better or for better. For in good looking and good looking, in hair and in hair, in good eyes and good eyes. You, when you stop looking nice, then I stop playing nice, right? We say those words. Is that what we say? But in reality, it says for better or for worse. That worst part becomes difficult because now love really shows forth. When difficult times hit your life and all of a sudden it becomes a direction of will because that person is not feeling well and they can't go up and do the things that they've always done. And when all of a sudden life hits you and you say, wait a minute, it is my direction of will. It's not what they can give me back. It's what I want, what's best for them. So the Bible tells us this is what's going to last is this kind of love. The Bible says this in John chapter 3. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For you today, I want you to know that the greatest gift we have is the gift of God. That he has given through his son and, and he loved the world this way. What did the world give him back? What can the world give him back? What is it that we have that he doesn't already have? See, he loved us that says no matter what, you can't give me more than I can give you. But I don't want your stuff. I don't want your things. I want you. And how I present myself every day to other people is demonstrating if my hope is in the everlasting love and unfailing love of God. See, I can't know this love apart from God. In John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, God sent his son to the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. If we today walked around with the unfailing love of God in our hearts. That when we see other people, we see them through the eyes of God and say how I want to act towards them is with an unselfish, what I call an altruistic love. 
Altruism is not a very big word these days. Most people don't know what it means and most people will never live it out. But that self-sacrificial love that says no matter what you can't give me back enough to pay me back for it. But I love you anyway. I love you for what's best for you, not for me. See, that's how God loves us. That for eternity, Jesus Christ was with the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit. They were in communion with one another for eternity. And then there became a beginning for us to have this knowledge of the beginning. And when that beginning came, it got to the place that God said, Now, son, it's time for you to go from our communion together of eternity to dwell amongst men for their benefit. Not for mine. And yet the King of kings and the Lord of lords who was born through the Virgin Mary and laid in a manger was born not to live but to die. His whole life was leading up to one point, the cross. And if we think of Christmas and we don't think of the cross, then we're missing the point. He did it for us. So in this very moment, I ask this question of you. When you think about love and you think about knowledge and you think about languages of this earth and the angels, do you love others? Or are you just a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal? Do you really look and say that I have all the understanding of everything? That I possess all the knowledge and I have the faith that this world that I could move mountains. It doesn't really matter if you don't love. You have nothing. Not only do you have nothing, you would be nothing. For us today, when we look and we see the knowledge of who God is, I give you this verse in Psalm chapter 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving in this moment and this moment alone. You have to answer that question to yourself. Do you really trust God? And have you really put your hope in his unfailing love? When you accept the love of God in your heart, it changes your perspective on life. It no longer matters if someone can give you what you desire in life because you realize no one human being can ever fulfill your expectations. It's unfair to place them on people. They can't do it. My hope and my joy and my peace comes from the unfailing love of of God, If I could move mountains, it wouldn't matter if I didn't love. My hope of everything is based upon him and his unfailing love. Today I ask you this question. As Christmas time approaches, have you really accepted the unfailing love of God in your life? If you've accepted the unfailing love of God in your life, it changes how you speak to people. It changes how you see people. It changes how you live on this earth. Because you realize this earth we're only passing through. And he is the only one that can give me real joy and real peace and real hope and real love. For God loved the world this much and he showed the world this love so much that he gave his son to die on a cross for us to have eternal life.
Today, as we prepare to have this song, do you understand the unfailing love of God? And is it demonstrated in your life every day? If it does, then prepare yourself to say, I want to give that love to other people. Maybe today you're sitting here and you say, you know, I go to church. I maybe go to church a lot. But I, I don't know that I've really accepted that love. I don't feel very loved. I feel angry and bitter and battered and broken and bruised. I feel angry a lot. And I don't know what that means. And there's no way I'm going to have the answers for everything. But I know this. When you fully experience the love of God in your life and you know that you can't earn it. You can't work your way towards it. You can never do anything to stop him from loving you. That changes our lives forever. See, it's too much pressure on me as a man, as a husband, to have an expectation that I could fulfill every need of my wife. This earth needs. To be able to think that I'm going to be the father that my children need for everything is an impossibility I need the unfailing love of God in my own life. So that a way, whenever I see them, it's not what they can give me, but it's what God can give them through me. So in your life, this fountain should be flowing through us. But if we don't accept the love of God, we're always going to feel bitter battered, broken, bruised, unjoyful, unpeaceful. We're not going to have hope. We're not going to have love. We need him. If you do not know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, I tell you from experience, there's no love apart from him. My prayer is that you will take this moment and you will ask him to come into your heart and change your perspective to a direction of will instead of a feeling. As we stand, may we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this day. And Lord, we know the gift of God has come and we have Christmas time that we celebrate his birth. But may we never forget that his birth took place so that we could have Easter. So, Lord, it is about your sending your son to die on a cross for us. Help us to experience that unfailing love for that person in here today, Lord, who doesn't really feel loved. Whether it's love from a family, love from a spouse, love from a friend. They don't understand and they don't feel like that they deserve it. Lord, I pray that right now they accept your unfailing love and they put their hope in that unfailing love where you will never do anything to benefit you you do everything to help us Lord for that person who's never accepted you into their heart Lord I pray that it is not my words that leads them there but your Holy Spirit would touch them to let them know that you are worthy of our hope. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.